and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be starting to take a look at the new Orc model Snickrod, which Games Workshop sent to me. Now for this video I'm going to be painting it in a, a very high tabletop standard and I'm going to be using contrast paints as well. You can see the model's already been primed but I've also given it this highlight and the reason for that is because of the contrast paint. So when I apply the contrast paint it's going to improve the highlight and the shadow effect. It's very similar actually to the way people do slap chop but the difference being that I've used an airbrush here to apply the white ink. Um, as you can see, it was the white ink from Vallejo, but I did find that I had to thin it with an airbrush thinner as well. Even though it is supposed to be airbrush type paint, it still needed to be thinned just a little bit, just to get that nice finish to it. As you can see, there's a little bit of speckling on there, but it's not so bad, and it will go away once I start painting. Now, here we have um, the contrast paint. Now I'm probably going to get these really very wrong indeed, but they're going to be in the description anyway. So starting with this lovely mantis green, I think that's what it is. And what you'll notice right away is that it's a very, a yellowy green color, almost like a neon. Applying it, I'm using just a size two Artist Opus miniature brush. And that's the, the shorter, fatter one that they do. Now. You don't need to use that specific brush. You can also use any really larger brush at all. Um, I do recommend a large brush. Uh, don't use a small detail brush. You'll be here for ages and it doesn't work quite as well because you do want to load up that brush with quite a lot of contrast paint just to get it running into those uh, the crevices. And that's how contrast paint really works. It runs into those little deep areas around his muscles and it makes them darker. Now, you don't need to be, uh, you don't need to be neat. The, the nice thing about contrast paint is that you don't need to really, really think what you're doing to slap it right on there. It runs into the recesses and as I said before, it best make, basically makes it go darker. So it creates that lovely effect. Now, I'm using these colors. You can use any color you like. And as you do continue to color, you'll notice that the colors will start to overlap, especially if you're, you know, you're slapping it on, like I said. All that will do is make it look even darker in these recesses where the colors overlap. And it'll make his, things like his muscles and the darker areas on his backpack and around his clothes just a little bit darker. It's quite a nice look for an orc with this light green. Some people like them a bit darker. As I said, he's your orc. Paint him exactly how you want, whatever makes you happy. I'd like to point out that you don't have to use um, the Games Workshop contrast paints. There's lots and lots of different contrast paints coming onto the market um, that do basically the same thing, uh, types of inks. Um, if you see a color that you like with another company, use it. Um, if you want to mix and match, do it. They all work uh, basically the same sort of way, so don't feel that you have to be constrained by the colours that I'm using. It, this is, as I said, this is your orc. Do whatever you like. Now, when you're painting him, it's really important that you get the focal point right on it. So, when you do the airbrushing right at the start, uh, make sure that you get the face and the chest area really extra bright. All the other areas on the model can be much darker and the black you know it stays black and around the size on the air, dark areas areas that will be naturally darker anyway so using the airbrush and sort of focusing it on the front of the model and the top of the model where you would expect light to hit it is a really good hack and it means that when you put the contrast paint on top a lot of the hard work is done for you Here you can see a, another contrast paint that I'm using. Um, I'm using it for the trousers or the pants. If you are American, I am not. It's just a dark brown, so um, like a garret, like a sewer color or something like that. And then we move on to the leather areas. And again, another sort of brownie sort of color that I can't remember the name of. But like I said, it's mentioned in the description and will be below in the video. It's all very, very simple. Um, just cover all the areas with the leather that you want. What one little tip for this is, as well as all the metal areas, are going to be painted black. So all the metal you can see here are going to be black. That means as you paint this leather now, don't worry about making a bit of a mess on the metal bits. It doesn't matter. 
I will be using the contrast black, which is the Templar black, but you don't have to use contrast paint black. You can use any black color you like. Um, I did find though that because it was the contrast paint and the way it flows, it's a bit quicker to use the black contrast paint, but it really is up to you. There's no real major benefit for using it because it's so dark and you might as well be painting anyway. But mm, the tip is don't worry about going over any of the metal parts there's loads on the backpack lots of studs lots of chains no difference if you get the um, brown on it because you're gonna be painting it black afterwards and the black will just cover any of it so don't worry about being extra neat um if i made a mistake here which i never do because i am richard gray i just leave it and then i fix it later on with a painting because this sort of area, you know, filling the areas of contrast paint, I find this very boring. It's not very interesting for me because I am Richard Gray. But it is very quick <laughs> and easy to do. It does give you a very nice base in terms of lighting and colour to work with. So you're setting yourself up for a really nice result at the end. But you just, you just got to go through the boring bit to begin with. So any of the bone areas, I then colour with um, Skeleton Horde. And that's pretty much all of the colours on there once I've done all the bony bits. Um, as I said, you've got the black. So this black here, I'm just putting it on the top of here. Just fill in all the areas that are left. So all the bits that are left are, apart from, of course, your teeth and your tongue. So don't play, don't paint the uh, the teeth and the tongue black. I painted those um, a coat of Skeleton Horde. And the tongue, I found a, a pinky kind of colour. But... Any kind of pink will do the job for there. Or you can use the dark green if you like. It depends on, on your orcs, really. Um, but, you know, you don't really see the tongue much anyway. It's quite nice here where we've got all the black areas all sorted out. And you can see how it frames the model. Um, you can see all the colours and the things much more clearly. Where before it just looked a bit messy and, you know, where you ever only have little bits here and there of leather and skin. Having the black all on there, it, it really brings the model together, I think. Um, if you don't want to join me in doing the metallic elements the way I do them at this point, that's fine. Um, if I was you, I would just paint all the black areas with metallic paint or whatever your preference is of metallic paint. Give it a quick wash and it's time for the it's time for the tabletop really. You're fine to hit the tables with it. Um, I think it looks pretty good um, like this. <laughs> See if you can spot the difference here between the quick cut there. I did actually give it a quick coat of matte varnish. Again, Vallejo varnish. And that's given it like, you know, it's just taken away the sheen. I do find that when using contrast paints that they do have quite a shiny sort of finish to them so it looks a little bit better to me just to put a little bit of matte varnish on there just to knock back that shininess a little bit um the nice thing about the matte varnish from vallejo is that it's not too matte it's pretty matte but it's not so matte that it makes everything look really washed out so at the moment it's my favorite matte varnish however that does not mean i won't be using other ones for other models and things so now we're actually getting to the part that I actually really enjoy doing. Um, proper painting, if you like. Now, remember this stage going on from here, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. And indeed, I know a lot of people that just aren't keen on the metallics. I just really prefer painting non-metallic metal and I quite like the look of it. So if it's not your thing, that's fine, you know. Um... <laughs> I do get a bit frustrated when people complain about the metallics because again if you don't like it don't do it it's not a big thing um yeah there shouldn't be a strong reaction against it or for it it's all personal preference and you know in the, there's plenty of room for whatever you like in this hobby just like whatever you like okay so what I'm doing here I'm just using neutral grey. So for all the colours I'm using now, they are new game colour Vallejo colour paints. So I've used them a little bit in the past. I do really like them. They're very, very matte. So generally they have pretty good coverage. In lots of cases, it's better than the equivalent kind of like uh, Games Workshop colours. But in some cases, it's just not as good. I think <laughs> at the end of the day, there's no 
supplier or creator that does everything right. All everyone does um, it differently. Everyone has better or worse paint colors or, or paint ranges. You just got to find ones that work well for you, and and just go from there. Um, I love. All the red paints from Gaines Workshop but I'm not using any red in this video so it's just easy to stick with the Vallejo ones but um, for other projects what I've actually found is that I like to mix between the two so I have my Games Workshop paint and then I'll mix some of the game color ones in and it gives a nice color result between the two you know just get the the best of both worlds so all I'm doing is I've got a size zero artist opus brush it's quite a small brush. It's an old one as well, so the tip is it's reasonably sharp, but it's not like razor sharp, because um, for the stand of paint, stand of painting, painting I'm doing here, it's not worth using a fancy new brush. So any kind of reasonable old brush would be my preference for painting on this, you know, because you're just going to wear the tip off. Anyway, most of the work we will be doing will be done doing this brush and just using the very tip of it. You do need to water these paints down, maybe a little bit more than you might expect, just to go through the colours on the wet palette there. So it's in the top left there. On the bottom left, you can see the neutral grey, and above that, you've got the neutral grey mixed with white, and above that, you've got the black. And to the right of that is the dead white. Now, you can actually use the white ink. In fact, they're they're almost identical dead white and white ink now. It's just the dead white's a little bit thicker. So considering that you have to water, thin down the white ink, I'm not really quite sure that it's worth getting, but I just wanted to test them really, um, just to see if there's any major differences. It's kind of a time saver though, depending on what you want to do. Like if you can't be bothered to thin everything for painting, uh, like the white ink, it's quicker and you can use that for airbrushing and it's just, <laughs> it's just, you know, do whatever you want to do in terms of saving you time or what you feel most comfortable with. In the bottom middle, there's the bio green, and that's going to be the main color for the skin. Then above that is the bar green mixed with the white, and then the bottom right is the desert yellow, and above that is the dead flesh. Mm. Those are going to be going. <laughs> those are going to be the colors used on the leather, sort of the uh, the straps and the backpack. Um, so what I've been think when I've been talking there, you can kind of see I've been working on the faceplate. The faceplate is probably the trickiest part of the model to paint. It's what the first thing people are going to look at. It's got lots of different facets, lots of edges to it, and I'm painting it in like a dark style, almost like a what's like. Have you seen Scanner Darkly or like um, cell shaded painting or what's that game Borderlands where you sort of um, you really highlight those edges quite strongly against the black edge highlighting, highlighting all over basically and in, um, I'm doing it in a really rough way because I want it to look like scratches and like the metals kind of darkened um, but you can see the edges where it's been rubbed off and then will be shiny so as you can see I do all of these little scratches all over it you can take this as far as you want in terms of refinement um, so you can see me doing a bit here and there, but as the video progresses, it'll just be little changes that happen that you won't see me actually do, just because um, this video is gonna be forever if I do that. But you know, you can see a little area, then I touch it up. Generally speaking, all I'm doing is like this, picking out all the edges, putting in a few scratches, and then I just fill in some areas, a large flat area, putting a few scratches down in the middle of it. So now we're just looking at where the light falls on it. So on the forehead kind of area, that gets a lot more gray. Um, just to make sure that you know we can show where the light hits the area because remember it will have to match the rest of the model and because there's another highlight highlight well <laughs> the way the contrast paint has worked the green has worked on the muscles and um it's worked on the leather the same way as well you can clearly sort of see sort of like the highlight points on that already even though i haven't highlighted it that's just naturally how the contrast paint works it's it's really great for that really um but you do have to make the metals match that so the metals having a little bit more work you can see me working on the bit on the backpack on the highlights but you know they're kind of match the rest of the model you can't go far wrong with them um even if you just do scratchy loose marks like i'm doing here it doesn't have to be perfect um the main thing that you're going to be looking for is getting those scratching marks down 
and after that not covering make sure you don't cover the whole of the black area because when we go to do the highlights remember it's a neutral gray mix with the white and we're going to go up to pure white as well for the few little areas so it'll create a very high contrast look and that's what we want to give that metal non-metallic feel to it just a little point as well light this is very very heavily zoomed in so you can see all the brush marks super clearly a little and you can also see a little bit of the speckling from the airbrush that I mentioned earlier. Now, you can't see those in the flesh when you look at the model. This is just super high, you know, we're zoomed right in. Um, so when you see the photograph at the end, it's a bit more zoomed out. It gives you more of a clear understanding of the whole model um, and what it looked like on the battlefield. But I really wanted when I was filming to get this really clear shot so that you can see all the brush marks and how I'm doing them because um, just from like a cursory glance, it looks like I'm doing the same marks on everything. But as you can see here, as I'm filling the skin, remember this is just the bile green. And to reiterate it, all the colors are Vallejo game color, the new ones. So sometimes the names repeat between the old ones and the new ones, but don't be thinking it's the same paint. It's a completely different formula compared to the old game color paints and you actually get a completely different results. So if you've got the old colors, you'll still be able to get the same sort of effect, but um, if you know what you're doing, but the paint will just look a little bit different. Um, the colors will be different, even if they've got the same name, you know, so just be aware of that. Um, anyway, as, we, as I was saying, we've moved in um, very, very close and you can see the brush mark because as I said, it looks like I'm doing similar marks all over, but actually um, all the different surfaces will look distinct between them. So the leather will look different, the metal will look different to the skin. So even though it looks like I'm just using the very tip of the brush and doing scratchy marks everywhere, the marks on the screen there, if I push a little bit harder, you can see it's quite not as, not quite as frenetic as when I do the other marks they sort of follow the line and the shape a little bit more and they're a little bit softer so that means well the paint is maybe a little bit thinner generally speaking though it's about 50 50 though as a rule these paints they maybe needed a little bit more thinning so maybe I'll go 60 40 water to paint test paint it test it yourself when you have a go I haven't used these paints that much before so I'm still I'm still learning I'm still tweaking the results but yes, I do find that the, the Vallejo paints do need a little bit more thinning in general, but not all of them, but in general, a little bit more thinning than the Game Workshop paints, which should mean that they last a bit longer, um, which is which is always good. Um, so basically, for the Bile Green, that needs a little bit more again, maybe 70, 30 water for the Bile Green to paint, but again, test it to see what you can get away with. But the idea is that you don't want the same scratchy look, or well, you do want scratchy look, you want the sort of scratchy look on the muscles that you want, but you want a softer look. So you can probably get away with using maybe a larger brush here, and that might help you with your, your softer marks. So if you go for a, a size two or something like that, it will cover the area like in one stroke much more quickly. But when you're applying it, always paint the highlight towards the brightest part of the highlight area. So start from around it, like the mid-tone drag, drag the brush um, towards the highlight and then take the brush off of the model. So whenever you move the brush, it will leave a tiny extra deposit of paint and what that does is that if you keep doing that painting towards the highlight point is that the brightest point will actually become opaque quicker um, than the start. Um, so when in effect, it'll create like a little transition from where the lightest point is lighter and uh, the, than the base color and the translucency into the paint means that the paint underneath shows through. And because of that, it gets more opaque near the brightest point. That makes it lighter because it is the brightest point because it is a lighter paint. I hope that makes sense. Bearing in mind that I am reading Richard's notes here, so I'm not really sure what I'm talking about. Right, as you can see, I'm quickly painting in the abs that he's got. And um, then again, it's just the same thing on all of the muscles. You don't see me in this video paint the hands on him or the back of the arms and things. I didn't have a lot of time. I was in a bit of a rush to get these through and I've got another video to come soon. For painting, um, but I've got to keep that on Patreon, I think. So if you know you want to see the whole thing of this, like how to paint the sword and the boots and the things like that, there will be another video. But what I found is that when I do videos for two parts in YouTube, no one ever watches the second part. So, you know, I guess people get enough information from watching the first video. And then, you know, it's only kind of like the really dedicated people that stay on for the second. 
I'd like to say now thank you for everyone who stays on for the second video. <laughs> so onto the leather. Again, this is very simple. And remember, this is using desert yellow. You don't need to thin this one quite as much as the color is quite close to the contrast that I've already used. Um, I can't remember the name of, but it was that brownie color. Um, sorry about that. Um, it'll be in the description below the video. So all you're doing in this one is the, the painting lines on it. So if you're using the very tip of the brush and the best advice I can give while doing this sort of painting is to allow the sculpting on the model to guide you. So you're not fighting against it. You're fighting with this molding. You're not trying to put in, in shadows that aren't there. You're not putting edges that aren't there. Just, just go with the flow, especially if you're using contrast paints and you've got everything sort of going to the, the crevices of the model. Don't fight it. <laughs> so. You're looking where lines appear and you're following those lines. So on the edges, you're following where the white lines are and you look at the little parallel lines. And if you put on roughly parallel, so anyway, on that leather strip, you can see there's a little nick there and then I just put a, like a light, a line down from the nick and the rest of it carries on to it, like the shape of that nick into the leather, if you know what I mean. So you then just do the lines near it and all the likes, all the marks to make it look correct. And then here again on these little straps that also go into the metal chains and sort of like I paint the lines that follow the creases or where I'd imagine the creases would be. Uh, like little stress points, you know? Um, if you're following the flow of the model, if you do that and you're, you're reasonably neat, it will make the model look pretty good. Remember, if you don't paint everything like neat, it will still look pretty good. It's quite forgiving, especially orcs. Um, it's something I found anyway. It takes a little bit of practice, but if you can just put all these little lines and things everywhere, like I say, if you follow the flow of the model, you don't have to work as hard. Um, you don't have to paint as much as I do. You don't have to make these precise layers and things like that. You can just do like little scribbly effects and it basically covers the area in that sort of texture. So here you can see as well on the leather straps again the same thing looking for the shapes to stand out areas like this obviously the creases and things in there so you pick those out and then you paint extra details on near them that follow near the same sort of lines as those texture details that are more sculpted on and it all kinds of works together one thing actually that i did that i didn't mention at the time for the leather is the backpack um i did give the backpack two coats of the brown contrast paint um <laughs> I want to go into my box of paints right now and just touch up a little bit but it's, I'm too late to do that and to start the video but I like the effect I got when I gave it one coat of white from the white and then when I brushed it on it made the colour a bit too desaturated so um, a bit too light so I did give it two coats of the brown contrast paint that you didn't see earlier just to knock it back a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna spend a little bit more time on the face paint. So as I mentioned, it has a lot of detail going on here. And even if you're painting this with true metals, you'll have a little bit of a problem trying to paint this quickly. So the start of the painting that I've used on the face paint, I know at the moment it still looks a bit messy. It won't come together until right at the end. It's kind of magic. <laughs> so all the little lenses on the front, like he's got three lenses here um, like for his right eye. Um, it's our left as we look at it, but for his right eye, and it's unlike, it's a little circular thing that he spins around, I guess. Um, it's looking a bit messy there. And you'd really have to concentrate on this, making the shapes of that really clear on this. So I do have to go back sort of like off video and just tidy this area off up a bit, just to make it look a bit more reasonable. Okay, for this stage, what I'm using again is the neutral gray mixed with the white, and it's kind of like a 50-50, a neutral gray to a dead white. And what I'm looking at is this kind of curve of the sort of like the circular thing that the lenses are resting on. So the top section of that catches a bit more light. So if you do like a little light volume highlight there and then it, it goes down, it's like darker around the sides, but the whole of the face gets a very angular hard edges. So just pick out a few of those to make sure you leave plenty of the standard neutral gray scratches visible as well. What I found is that for a lot of them, I try to paint. So um, usually when you see a hard edge, what you do is you use the side of the tip of the brush. So just run that along the edge and the hard edge will pick up the paint as long as you drag the brush edge. Work with the model, not against the model. Um, there's so many little details and things, um, you know, just it, the model is there, you know, the shape of the model is there to help you and just go, go for it. So using the tip of the brush, I'm picking out the edges that normally that you would, uh, you'd risk making more of a mess with, but because I'm painting messily anyway, you know, it's, going to, it's got all scratches and things. I didn't think that was a problem. It sort of helped with the process. 
Okay, so finally here what I'm doing is just getting all the white paint and just again picking out a few of the edges. Don't go crazy with the white paint. What you find is that the more white paint you use, the less effective it is because you lose the high contrast. Um, with just a small amount of white paint, you'd put a dot there and then. It looks like a shine and then you have more white paint to it. <sighs> How does Richard do this? I need a drink. Hold on. One second. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. So finally here, what I'm doing is just getting the white paint and just picking out a few of the edges. Now don't go crazy with the white paint. What you find is that the more white paint you use, the less effective it is because you lose that high contrast. Now, with just a small amount of white paint, you put a dot there and then it looks like a shine. Um, if you add more white paint to it, it stops looking like a shine. It's less high contrast. You know that white, white, <laughs> When white is one white dot on its own, that draws all, all of your vision to it. It draws the eye, basically. We put a lot of white there. Then it becomes a white painted in effect. Because remember that you're trying to do a metal effect. This always is going to be a white paint. And that's as bright as it can go. White is as bright as we can go. Um, it doesn't have that glare effect from an actual metal surface because we're not using metallic paints. If you're using true metallic paints, it will have that glare effect naturally. Um, so it can be quite tricky to do this sometimes, you know, when you look at social media posts and things where someone's painted non-metallics and it will look really great, like really bright and shiny, but that's purely because you're looking at it through a screen. Um, so the screen itself has the glow effect from it. it, it enhances the effect basically. In reality, if it's just white paint, you really have to go for the white high contrast to make sure that the metallic metal effect works in reality and uh, part of that that I find anyway is that I have to do a very opaque white so if you put a white dot there it will look good while it's wet but then it will dry and become a little bit translucent so a little bit of the grey will show through underneath it and then you it's hard to translate in the video because you're seeing it directly under a really bright light but to my eyes, when I'm seeing this in the flesh, I have to go over the top of the white dots multiple times just so it's opaque white. So remember that you might need to let this dry and go over the white again and again just to get that pure white, no translucency at all. So we don't want the paint showing through on these really, really, really sharp edges. Um, as you can see, as I was talking about earlier on the forehead panel, I'm just giving that a little bit of extra gray. Um, it just helps with the light and it helps with the light sourcing effect. I did actually think at this stage um, that I've probably gone a bit too heavy on some of the gray edges. Um, these could be knocked back a bit. It's a fine balance, but the other thing is, do you want all the detail to pick, be picked out or not. Um, if you look at his belt buckle with the three triangles on it, something like that, it's super easy to do. As you can see, I just picked out some of the edges and a few little bit of scribbles on there and that works, you know, just less than a minute probably to paint that whole area. Where it's a face, okay, no, it, it looks a bit worse, it takes a little bit longer. Um, so now I'm using grunge brown. There are two versions of the grunge brown here. Um, there's the bottom right one, that's like a normal round. Um, I've used about 50-50, maybe 60-40 water paint um, on the one above that. And again, it's grunge brown. So it's the same paints, just different water amounts. But this one, the top one is very heavily watered down. Um, about four to five parts water to one part paint. It's it's basically a glaze at this point, um, a bit like the contrast paint, but more carefully applied. So it's because it's thinned down and I'm just running it roughly over. Um, it, what may, mainly happens now is that it goes into the recesses again. So it sort of looks a bit grimy, a bit rusty, uh, but a bit, a bit more over the gray areas, basically. Try not to get it on any of your white highlights, especially after you spent all those that time doing them, because then it will knock them back again and you might want to go back again and put the white back on. <laughs> and then you lose the high contrast, like I said earlier. But if you keep it in the, the mid sort of gray areas of the, of the metallic, uh, it, 
it, it'll get into the dark recesses and things and it'll just start looking like a grimy build-up and a bit of dirt you know um try getting it on the flat surface as well because of the color of it. it doesn't matter if you get a bit on the leather that's absolutely fine don't worry about being extra neat try not to get it on the skin if you can avoid it but if you get it on the leather not an issue really so obviously while you're seeing this um i mentioned like i'm not finishing the whole model in this video but if you just carry on all the same processes that i have you've seen um you should be able to get the same result the only thing that you might struggle with um would maybe be the the change on the wrists and i i'm not even sure how sure how i can paint that in the minute because it's going to be a bit of a pain to paint all of those individually because it's like a high level tabletop standard I don't want to be spending that too long on those but I'll see how I go on those and just generally speaking like all these metal areas like all the bits on the belt and uh, the same on the back as there is on the front you know don't go thinking that there's anything particularly special about them just because they're on the back of the model um, for the leather here remember that I think it was Garagex hide whatever it is um something about a sewer okay i like that dark contrast anyway like grimy gone car contrast paint on the trousers so i'm just again using the grinch brown and picking out the creases first and also like pick picking out like a, a scruffy scribbly sort of effect so it's a little bit similar to how i painted the skin but more chaotic so you don't want something like this and it, you know actually you're kind of not so much following the flow of the model on this bit on his trousers you're trying to get like an even texture all over but there's more concentrate on the more prominent feature like the front of the, like the front of his kneecap basically and the top of the thigh because that's going to be catching more light um, so you're using this as an effect to create texture on the model but also a way to add highlight as well as you can see here as well, I'm just going to add a little bit of the desert yellow on top of the Grinch brown, just for final highlight. It's purely optional if you want to do this or not. You'll just push the highlights a little bit more, but it's exactly the same process. Just using the very tip of the brush, pick out a few creases and things. One thing to note, as you're painting the additional highlights, it's the brighter and the highlight of the needle that you need to be doing. So more refined brush marks and just being really careful where everything goes so you can see exactly there the marks I'm making is really quite small can you see like little tiny little marks and they're quite refined and I'm doing them fairly quickly like if I was pacing this um, you know for golden demon entry the concept would be the same it's just that every mark would be just a bit better you know and just taking a little bit more care over what you're doing but you can use the same sort of process to paint high level this kind of thing um, so anyway now we're going to push up the skin just a little bit i did find actually that the mantis green that i used on top of the white um, left such bright highlights that i didn't have much area um, much space to work with to push the highlights any brighter it's just going to make the skin very very bright so as i said this is the brile green mixed with the white and you're just looking again where the contrast should have done most of the work for you so you're just picking out this uh, shiny light um the volumes on the very top of the mod model so the model where his muscles are so right at the top here yeah so if you hold the um the, the model um under the lamp you'll see that the light would naturally hit these areas anyway i do recommend that every now and again you take a little bit of a break put your model under a lamp and see where the light hits it. it it it's such a useful tool to use um so being careful like again make sure the paints are reasonably watered down so you know maybe 60 40 maybe a little bit more don't put too much on paint on your brush as you can see in the moment i've actually put too much on my brush it's slightly overloaded on his lips so i'm just ruining this brush because I've got paint going all the way up to the ferrule and you can see why I've been getting that on that's actually you know don't do that it will wreck them <laughs> they'll wear out much faster and much quicker um I don't mind too much about that I have quite a lot of paint brushes but that's because I get scent free paint brushes so it's not that big a deal for me um but please don't do this with your brushes because you know they're not cheap are they um so spending the time cleaning paintbrushes is always a, a bit of a nightmare um, but you know like I said don't do it you'll wreck your paintbrushes and um, you won't be able to get that out very easy okay 
So the only thing actually as well is when I paint like this, I get quite attached to my individual brushes. Um, so uh, I don't like changing my brushes at all, um, even if I even if I'm starting to wreck them because I like the effect they have and how they're working. Um, and then what I find is that the tip has worn off the brush, and so I can't use details as fine as I expect. And then I get a new brush. Um, and then I get shocked because they're so different between the new brushes and the old brushes because, um, you know, it's something to bear in mind anyway. You get used to the effects you get with a brush and you get it worn in like a pair of shoes, like a comfy pair of shoes. Oh, this pair of shoes is lovely and comfy. I'm used to this. And then you get into a new pair of shoes and it's like, oh, it's a, it's different. That's my analogy. Anyway. That's not Richard's one. I just made that one up. Um, anyway. This is an older brush that I'm using to paint this model, but with that, what I'll say with the new ones, the very, very fine details when you're doing your golden demons and things, just, they go, my brushes go into different categories after I've used them. So, you know, they get into, sometimes a new, sometimes you find that a, a blunt brush is way more useful than a very sharp brush. You can cover more air. You can get a, a larger dot. Um, it's something that I find is really useful if you're doing stippling, if you want to get like a heavy sort of texture effect. Um, a very new brush with a very sharp point won't do the job as well as an older brush that you've worn in a little bit. It'll be terrible for stippling. So yeah, always keep your brushes. Even if they're starting to get really quite worn and manky, you will find a use for them. Um, yeah. Anyway, don't throw them away because <laughs> they don't have a perfect tip anymore. Anyway, onto the leather. Just filling in a bit of time where I'm using the flesh colour. Now, if you wanted, um, you could add a bit of um, white to this desert yellow colour if you wanted. It, it gets a similar result, just a lighter kind of colour from it. Just be a little bit careful when painting this. Um, um, I mean, that's true for all the colours actually, but for the highlights, I've been using lighter colours and adding white to them, and that means you're desaturating the colours themselves. So if you go too heavy with any of the highlights, you're just taking away the colour that you painted on there, and it can look a bit pale and pasty. Um, although you can counteract as well by going back with the base colour, um, like your glazing, like uh, water down the glaze colour heavily, and then glazing that sort of into the mid-tone sort of areas to, to give a, a bit of a punch back into the colours. If you need that, it will help to smooth your areas out. Um, but then again, that's something if you're painting a more important character model or something like that, a competition piece or a display piece. Right. Whew. Finally, what I'm going to show you how to do is the lenses. I've just picked up the big one because that's the easiest one for you to do. So I'm using turquoise and then the first highlight color is aquamarine. You can take the turquoise and add white to it. Um, so that's the same kind of thing. Um, to start with, paint a line all the way around the lens using the turquoise and then paint the bottom half to two thirds to try and get that little bit of a transition. And you can make it a little bit scratchy now normally. If I was doing this and I was painting them a bit neater, I would have some turquoise mixed in with the black in, like a, a few different transitions, but just to make it a little bit neater and cleaner. But anyway, you can see where I'm going in with white. So I put the white on the bottom and I blobbed it on a little bit. It's actually all right in the video, but it kind of annoyed me that I've gone a bit wrong. So I go back there and just want to neat that up a bit, but you can see you put the white on the lower bit. Um, gone back in with the aquamarine and, sorry, the turquoise and then the aquamarine. And then I just blend it in just a little bit. So basically what it is, is the bottom right is a highlight on the lens. Uh, top left is the white dot. It's a really simple way of doing lenses and gems, anything like that. It's just the light hitting the top left and then going in inside it. And then you can kind of see sort of like a glow at the bottom right. And this is pretty much how Games Workshop do gems and things as well. It's very, very common technique. And so here's like, coming up is a final final photo. So this is taken in like a better lighting setup. So you can see it's a little bit darker. Everything just looks a little bit neater. And the face paint isn't quite as garish with all the gray lines. I've sort of pulled that back a little bit. Um, so you can see having the difference between having enter a very bright lamp and then hovering over it sort of a, to a kind of reasonably lit area. This picture is from a, a less heavily lit area. Um, anyway, that's the end of the video. As mentioned, there will be a second video for this on my Patreon. Um, 
so I've got loads and loads of videos um, that you can watch on my personal website as well and they both have the same videos on um, but my website might be a bit easier to navigate and because Patreon is just like scrolling all the way down at the moment I'm working on my golden demon entry uh, which is a unit of vampires which is taking a loads of time but hopefully that'll be interesting to look at you know please subscribe to the channel and I've got lots and lots of videos to come like thank you for watching and catch you next time if you've enjoyed listening to me Rebecca Gray please leave a comment and say how fantastic I am thank you so much have a good day